Paul, have you heard the big rock star controversy this week? No, I haven't. Lay it on me. Well, this week, the Grand Theft Auto trilogy, that is, Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Now, those games came out, like, right around the turn of the millennium. Uh, yeah, decades ago. Right, this was the PS2 era Grand Theft Auto games. And now they've gotten a remaster, a final remaster, a definitive edition. And um, fans have been wanting this for a while. The, the existing editions, you know, it's getting harder and harder to find working PlayStations these days. You know, every year we lose a few. Yeah. And, um, you know, copies are getting scratched. You know, copies of those games are getting scratched or lost. And, you know, nobody's printing more. So everybody wanted a re-release. And they were like, great, we're going to do a definitive edition. All three games for 60 bucks, hmm. which is a lot for, for a game for games that old, but you know, remastered. And for modern consoles or releasing across platform? Yeah. Oh yeah, modern systems. So you don't have to maintain a you know 20 year old PlayStation 2 to, to play the game. You can just play it on your modern hardware. But the controversy is that Rockstar who made a billion dollars last year selling shark cards for their GTA Online. They're, they're kind of Yikes. doing the... You know, the, they're not making more Grand Theft Auto games. They're just making more stuff for Grand Theft Auto Online because it's making so much money. They've hit their wow days. Exactly. And there's... And, you know, the Grand Theft Auto Online stuff is... Well, it's 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 an online grindathon. Like that's not what kind of their original audience was all about. Yeah. So, but they've just made more money that you know than some countries. And yet, when it came time to make the defining version of these three classic games that kind of propelled them to being a modern star, this is their legacy. And they handed the project off to a mobile developer. Uh-oh. Yeah, so the if you're just looking at the... I'll put some of this in the show notes, but I have put some images in the diecast document that we use that you can look at. And um, the first two images are the re tell the real story. The, the city itself looks pretty good. If you go out in the wilderness, it all looks pretty great. But the character models in the definitive edition look absolutely inexcusably primitive they look much much worse than the you know original playstation 2 models <laughs> well i don't know if worse is is the direction they went i mean they, they definitely look more um i don't know like we what is that the we character yeah the me's the, the yeah, that's what everybody yeah. says they look like me's it looks very <laughs> meified, yeah. And, um, well, I mean, that's horrible. That's like, that's the version now. And you can see the, I forget this character's name. I think it's Denise. Or am I thinking of Auntie Denise with all that ass? I don't remember. Um, I can't remember. Anyway, she's Carl's first girlfriend in San Andreas. And, you know, I think the one on the left, what she looked like in you know, 2001 still looks pretty darn good. Yeah, well, I mean, in context, if you've got a, like a medium res PS2 title, then yeah, yeah, it looks fine. And then the fans, the image on the right, have re made their own remaster where the game is brought up to <laughs> modern abilities and it looks fantastic. But of course, uh, Rockstar hit those folks with the cease and desist, made them take it wait, down. Wait, 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 hang on, what? So, so someone already did all the hard work of making their game look amazing, and instead of being yes. like, oh, thank you, here's a million dollars, now we're going to publish it and make a billion dollars, they're like, no, we get to make a version. It'll be terrible. Exactly. And that would be okay if this was some struggling developer, but, you know, considering that they are in their wild days, both in behavior and in terms of income, where they've just got so much money... And this is the core of their legacy. And this is how little they thought of it. That the definitive edition looks 
so garbage. I'm assuming that this is representative of, of the character models. This isn't like cherry-picked, worst case kind of thing. Uh, I think she actually... Okay, to be totally fair, she is one of the worst ones. You could scroll down uh, and see a few more examples. And then there's just like attention to detail things. There's misspelled signs. And a lot of the signage looks kind of like it just was made in MS Paint. Like it doesn't... The the texture maps often look like they were designed from photo references, right? Somebody took a picture, crushed it down to tiny postage stamp size, and that was the texture for this wall. But for the remaster, a lot of the signage was not made from photographic sources. It was just somebody opened up you know, a drawing program and laid out these fonts with perfect crisp edges and there's no texture to anything. It's just, you know, a perfect surface. It looks Yeah, you know, I'm noticing that it doesn't look like they used any normal maps on their on their remaster, which is very strange. You think that, and yeah, but then if you look at the final image, um, one of the other attention to detail th things is you see somebody <gasps> wearing a, yeah somebody wearing a jersey that has a normal map that indicates he has an embossed seven on his jersey but the texture is a nine <laughs> so it's like the shape of a seven and the texture of a nine like that's wow. the level of of care so they that are went into using this. normal maps they're just not actually using the normal maps they, they've got right. them in They've got the technology, they got the pipeline, they just didn't put anything in it. <laughs> They're making your computer render it. They're just not doing anything with it. It's like a perfectly flat normal map. <laughs> it's just yeah. like just uh, to keep your just to keep your graphics card warm. Wow. That's this really dumb. This really rubs me the wrong way because one of the running themes in Grand Theft Auto 5 is this constant like adolescent bitching about capitalism now that's a fine thing <laughs> yeah that's a and fine in thing. four especially right like four was just all right. about that wasn't it yeah but and you know that's the that's a legitimate topic to tackle in your work is the, you know question the the outcomes of capitalism or to challenge things you don't think are good or that are that are or unjust or whatever that's totally fine but you don't get to do that when you are sort of the pinnacle of the thing you're co this is like Harvey Weinstein complaining that women in Hollywood don't get any respect like how dare you <laughs> you don't get to complain about that it's like somebody it's like Microsoft like going on a somebody at Microsoft going on a long rant about proprietary systems making it hard to get computers to interoperate. <laughs> no. You can't <laughs> complain about this. You are the worst one. Well, I mean, EA still holds that title belt, I think. But yes, they're they're vying for that despicable championship at this point. Right. Just oh. It just is like don't you have any pride in your own legacy? Like Valve, you go to Valve's office and they've got like all these wonderful models and murals and the whole thing is decorated, showing off their decades of creative um, accomplishments. Look at the awesome shit we made that people love. And and that's just in their office. <laughs> that's just for them. Right. And this is like that version of of what Rockstar wanted to show the world. Here's our legacy. Here's what we made. But we we don't even want it. It's like this is something that somebody at the company ought to want to do. Well, we're not going to outsource this. This is my baby. I worked on this back when I was a junior programmer. I got hired and this was my first big project. I've always wanted to go back and fix this one thing. Man, let's spend a year and polish that thing up and and release the ultimate ver no, we'll just hand it to a mobile developer and have them just crank out the lowest possible effort edition. I mean, at the very very least, you could have run all the textures through an AI upreser. So it would be exactly the same right? textures, just just upresed. And it wouldn't be perfect, but it would be better than this. Like this isn't 
This isn't the same. It's like someone... It's like someone was making a comedy version of this game. And they're like, <laughs> right? it's like this is a parody of the original game. Right, or knockoff. <laughs> You've become your own knockoff. Yeah, oh, especially when the, like the, the fan version was so just really perfectly impressive. Like it, it, it took what made the character. I, I, I've never played. I'm just basing off this, off this image. But I mean, like it looks like it took what made the character identifiable and just like made it pop. And like that's incredible. Right. You can recognize her. You look at this upscaled modern version of it and go, I know exactly who that is. And then you look at that little weeble in the middle and you're like, what e is that? Is that <laughs> Carl's grandmother? <laughs> like, what is or, or granddaughter? I mean, like, I'm Would not sure. Write? Is she really old or really young? Nothing about that says girlfriend to me. No. It looks like, I think that's supposed to be a bandana. But it's pure black, so it just looks like she's mm -hmm. got short black hair. Like, so it looks like a little boy. But then the face looks kind of like they've got... The only detail is slight lines around the face. That's the only hint oh, at any yeah. detail. Which gives it, like, a weird feeling of, is this supposed to be an old person? Did you start with an old person texture and then just hit it with a blur filter? <laughs> Those thin lips. Yeah, it looks like a boy. It looks like a young boy. Oh man. Yeah, that's that's too bad. They should have just they should have just bought the fan version. They should have just paid the fans, the people whoever w contributed to that fan pack all the money. Just give them all the money, and and right? make them not claim any of it, and be like, look what we made. It's incredible. And people who know about it would be like, oh, they just took the thing from the the, you know, from the people who developed the fan pack. And the people with the fan pack from their yachts would be like, no, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, it's so gross. It's so gross and so offensive. All right, Paul, that's enough complaining out of me. Please tell me some good news. Let's uh, cheer, cheer me up. Tell me that everything is working great. Everything is working great now, but I'm not sure why, because Earlier in the week, I turned my computer on and it booted up just like normal and the screen came up just like normal But there was no mouse on the screen and I tried tapping on the keyboard and the keyboard didn't respond and So then oh, I was no. like, oh, this is gonna be a bad day oh, So I no. rolled in my my PS2 keyboard because I got one of those floating around and plugged that in because I'm oh Maybe it's the USB. I, I tried plugging in other USB devices and none of the USB devices would work So I plugged in the PS2 keyboard. I'm like surely but no Restarted the computer with the PS2 keyboard plugged in. Nope, still nothing. It lit up for a second when it was booting and then just turned off. So I was like, man, do I? what do I need to do to fix this? Like, what's wrong? How do I even tell what's wrong if it doesn't have any input devices? Like, I can't even ask it to try to update the drivers. <laughs> oh, no. So I figured yeah. it can't be the graphics card and it can't be the processor because it's booting up just fine. It can't be the hard drive. Like, all those things seem to be working. It's got to be the motherboard. There's got to be like some sort of like input controller on the motherboard that's just died or something. Okay. So I ordered a new motherboard and then I was like, okay, well, you know, if it's not the motherboard, I'll just keep ordering components until I figure out which one it is. And then I'll probably just buy the rest of them and have two computers. <laughs> so I ordered a new motherboard. Uh, and then while I was waiting for it to arrive, I was like, well, you know, I should probably go into the boot menu and see if there's like something weird going on there. So I brought up the boot menu. And, uh, and it's like, oh yeah, here's your boot menu and everything's normal and yeah, everything's fine. And I was poking around in there, you know, flipping switches or whatever, probably irresponsibly. And, you know, boot menus are, are one of those dangerous things where like, it's like the high voltage right. cover that you open it up and it's like warning, wear gloves, you know, and, and protective safety mask or whatever. Um, but I just I went like in there and I was like, you've I... got, yeah, you've got options in there for like, do you want me to default to having the numlock on? And, you know, when you turn on the computer. And do you want me uh -huh. to use the memory that you have plugged in? <laughs> Just a couple uh -huh. of checkboxes that you can or, easily get like one the, wrong. Secure erase hard drive where it, like, sets every bit to zero on the entire thing. And right next to it is, you know, like, boot options. It's like, oh, you start to sweat. <laughs> yeah. So I was in there flipping switches and doing stuff. And one time, at one point, I got into, like, 
like alternate boot methods or whatever. And I was like, you know, boot to onboard something or other. And so I was like, all right, fine. What does that do? And so it just brings up a console. It's like, you know, it's basically like DOS from the old days, only it's like built into the, the motherboard. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, that's I can really type stuff cool. in. Yeah. Yeah. And Let so I type some stuff in and it's like, and, yeah. command not recognized, you know, and, and I, I'm not going to do anything in this. I was just wanting, but the mouse and keyboard work. So it's not the motherboard. So it must be Windows. Oh, weird. So then I was like, all right, well, fine. I'll just boot back to Windows. So I restart the computer and it brings me back to the system boot menu. I was like, oh, uh oh. And so then I go and it's like hard drive not found. I was like, oh, oh no, <laughs> what have I done? And yep. so then I'm like furiously flipping switches in the, in the BIOS and <laughs> like trying to figure out what's happening. And, and then I turn it off and what, how did I get it working again? I don't even remember how I got it working again, Seamus. I'm so bad at this. Never, I just, never mind. I, like, I turned I it on it and working. off a bunch of times. Right, exactly. I turn it on and off a bunch of times and like plug and unplug things. And then it just like boots up into Windows again. And Windows recognizes the mouse and keyboard again. And so now I'm like, what went wrong in the first place? <laughs> what just happened to me? Did I just wake from some terrible dream? You know, you're telling me this story and it sounds weirdly familiar. I don't know. <laughs> If I haven't been through this exact same scenario, I've been through one that is eerily similar. I can't uh. remember the details now, but as you're telling me this story, this all just feels so familiar. Oh, that's weird. Oh, man. It's it's a premonition. It's going to happen to you next week. Just watch. Oh, don't don't joke about that ball. Okay, so so I like my computer works again. I'm like, okay, well, well now I've got this motherboard coming in the mail. What am I going to do with that? And I've just been doing all these commissions and my wife's like, you should just buy another computer. Just, you know, spend some of that money and, and buy a new computer. And so that's what I did. And now I own a copy of Halo Infinite for some reason. Because <laughs> apparently you when you buy it? specific Ryzen processors, no, it doesn't come out till December 8th. When you buy some specific Ryzen processors, then you gain the privilege of downloading some sort of like bootloader thing that'll verify that you have the hardware on your computer that you bought. And then you can like go to some store and punch in a code and then you can get a copy of Halo Infinite for one month for free or, or something. I don't even know. I haven't done it yet because I don't have the computer yet because I don't have the hardware yet. So weird. It doesn't sound like Halo Infinite. That sounds like Halo Very Limited. That sounds like Halo Decidedly Finite. Yeah, it's probably one of those online MMO things you got to pay a subscription for. <laughs> Halo Infinite. Infinite being how much it will cost you to get all the content and microtransactions. <laughs> how much money they're expecting to make. Yeah, I'm really suspicious that I have to buy a copy of it and then I get one month subscription for free. I'm Maybe that's what's going to happen. Gross. Yeah. It's especially weird because I have like Xbox Game Pass and I could swear it has a Halo Infinite on it for like free. And that's just, you know, oh, yeah. get get all the games in the world for 25 bucks a month. Yeah, yeah, it's it's on it's on Xbox. So you've got to, not only do you have to download the Ryzen like spyware or whatever that verifies that you're using the processor that they think you're using, but you also have to install Xbox Live or whatever it is on your computer and then like uh, I don't even know. It's just an app. It's an app that's called Xbox, which is the name of a platform. It's like <laughs> hardware. It used to be a piece right. of hardware. Now it's a mini fridge. <laughs> it just makes no sense that this app is called... Hey, Microsoft needed to come up with a name for the an umbrella term for both Xbox and PC games. They're whatever... All the green shit that you make, that green branding with the big <laughs> X, okay, that big sort of amorphous, shapeless mass of hype and Mountain Dew branding, that, you need a name for that that is not the name of a part of it. Right, right. It's like the whole division. You call it the X-Men or something. No, wait, that, that wouldn't go over well. X-Factor. X-Force. Oh, wow, there's a lot. There's not a lot of room to work there with the old X branding. Yeah, it makes you wonder what they were thinking. Right. Um, 
Yeah. So I, I, I laugh every time I go to open it up and I have to launch Xbox. It's like having an app on my computer called Amiga or TI-99-4A. <laughs> just, just think of it as an emulator. Right. <laughs> All right. Have you been playing any video games this week? Yeah, speaking of free games. Actually, I've been playing mostly Hitman. I'm not sure why. I'm mm. just having a lot of fun playing a lot of Hitman. I was doing the Murder Everybody Challenge, and then I was trying to do the Knock Everybody Out Challenge, which is something I came up with on my own. But that one's even more comical because when people find someone that's been knocked out, they'll wake them up. So it's this... Oh, no. Just this madhouse of people getting woken back up. And, you know, sometimes I'll take their clothes. So a guard will, like, find another guard and wake him back up, but he's in his underpants. How does he know he's a guard if he's not wearing his guard outfit? <laughs> I know, I wondered about that, too. But he, like, has, you know, his pistol's either on the ground or he has a pistol somehow when he gets up again. So he's running around with a gun in his underpants, which gives it a weird Bruce Willis vibe. <laughs> makes it really <laughs> scary. Like, oh, shit, this guy, this guy has nothing to lose. And nothing to hide. It's like the boondock saints kind of thing. Right. Anyway, it's friggin' impossible. I haven't finished a map. So I just run back and forth and knock people out till they kill me. So it's not so much <laughs> I'm being a hitman as I'm pranking the AI. Do, do you but have anyway. it playing Yakety Sax in the background? Oh, it should. That would be the appropriate soundtrack for this madness. But the game I played today is Barrow Trauma. Wow, um, total whiplash. Yeah. Now, Barrow Trauma, they're having a free weekend. Of course, by the time this podcast goes live, the free weekend will be over. I'm sorry everybody missed it. And I loved the, the trailer for this game, and I love the concept. Okay, you're in a submarine, okay, on Europa. Okay, with you. Whoa, you lost me. <laughs> a submarine on an alien world, on, on the moon Europa, which is, that's a Jovian okay. moon, right? Okay, so it's like Subnautica kind of thing. Right, and it's 2D kind of side-scrolling. Um, if you've ever seen the Swapper, it feels kind of oh, like yes. that. It feels like if you, it feels like that in terms of art presentation and animation. Um, I love it, like uh, the, the loading screens have these little tips the um what do you call it the barnacle not barnacles the um muscles the stuff that grows on like the hulls of ships oh yeah barnacles okay if you let them grow for too long um in you know in the ballast area of your ship they will it will gradually gain self-awareness <laughs> oh no oh uh, yeah it's very like spooky and weird and strange I just love the entire style of it, but I freaking hate the gameplay. The gameplay is awful. Awful. Oh, no. Yeah, I played the tutorial, and it's like, okay, this area is flooding. It's like, quick, open up this cabinet and take this thing and put it in. It takes a lot of clicks to, like, take all this crap and equip it on your person, and then, wait, do I click and drag, or do I... Do I, no, no, I have to hold down the right button and left click. And it's like, this is a common operation and it requires multiple button presses and you only have a few in inventory slots and it wasn't clear what you were supposed to do. And like, it, I could tell that once the game got going and I got out of the tutorial that it was going to be sort of, oh no, I've got a flood. I've got to patch it quick. Oh, let me slowly walk my person over there. Oh, wait. The I'm not close enough to this thing. Okay, line them up so that they... Okay, now I can take something out of the cabinet. Now I'll walk over the... Oh, wait, I've got to push the button with my fumbly, weird hand. I'm facing the wrong way. Come on, move the mouse. Okay, now I can begin walking towards this hole in the hall. And it's like you've done 10 clicks and 8 button presses just to begin repairing. And so the struggle is not against the, the horrors of the deep... The struggle is against the interface and just how janky, late 90s, awful it is. 
Mm. I hated it. It felt awful to play. It felt awful to move around. Like, oh, I'm on a ladder. No, I, I slipped off. No, I can't. Okay, I can't get up the ladder and press the button to open the hatch above. Oh, I see. I can just click on it with the mouse. Ugh, it just feels off. Everything feels awful. Um, and it feels like that's the that should be easy. That that should be the easy stuff. Um, and it should be you know deciding where to allocate your resources, not how do I use my human hands to object to manipulate objects. <laughs> Like yeah, is this a the... game about humans on an alien world, or is this a game about aliens trying to run a human body? Right, exactly. That's what it felt like. It felt like the latter. And it just was awful. And so I really, I, I hung around for a good half hour, went through the tutorial, and I was like, no, this just isn't fun. It's not fun. Even though the, the, the style and the setting is just delicious. The gameplay was just too awful, and I wanted nothing to do with it. Hmm. Maybe something to watch a streamer do or something. Right. Somebody who has patience for that. Somebody who's an actual mollusk, and they can experience what it's like <laughs> to operate a human body. And they'll be like, oh, so this is what it's like. Incredibly ungainly. And what are they so cranky and scraping us off the holes all the time? Right. All right. Let's do some mailbags. Dear Diecast, who do you think are some of the best written villains in video games and or... What do you think makes a great video game villain? Would you say there are constraints or stumbling blocks that exist in video games for making well-written villains that aren't an issue in other mediums? Do you think villains in video games need to be tackled in different ways when writing them? Who are some of your favorites and why? Any examples you would use as a don't do this, never do this piece of advice for future games? Are there any villains you think were close to being great, but ruined or held back from achieving their full potential? Unkind regards, Andrew. Thank you, I guess, Andrew. One of the tricks is in... Uh, okay, when you're telling a story, the bad guy needs to win several times, right? Especially hmm. somewhere in the middle. You need to have a fight with him and you need to lose. Or the hero needs to lose anyway. Right, right. But, like, that's hard to do in a video game because without just... Oh, make it a cutscene, and then the player feels just absolutely cheated that you forced them to lose, and you took their video game away and made them watch a movie, and it makes them sort of reject this moment of failure. This isn't what really happened, or this isn't part of my story as I'm experiencing it. But you know, what do you do? What do you do? How do you make sure that the player loses without it feeling like a lame cheat? But without actually making it so the player could just win in the middle of the game and just, you know, <laughs> just beat the boss on the first try and end it at the, at the second act. Hmm. That's... I suppose you could have some... the player play as the villain for those parts. Right. Or you could have the villain betray them there. So you get betrayed, you get backstabbed. So, it's you know, understandable <laughs> why the... Yeah, yeah. The wise mentor pulls off his mask and he was the villain all along like in jail right Empire. right and that's what yeah exactly and that's why you didn't you know you can't fight him here he's already he's already you know thrown you down a pit or whatever betrayed you or stabbed you in the back or done his plan is all by the time you realize it he has already enacted it and so you are sort of defeated preemptively that's one way to do it there are other ways to do it um, but that's a tricky one that games, games need you to participate in your failure. Like in a movie, it's okay. The stuntman knows he's not supposed to win the fight. He, <laughs> when the, when the bad guys, uh -huh. you know, hits the stuntman, he goes over the railing and, and, you know, is defeated. <laughs> but, you know, if right. the, the player is not in on it. <laughs> The player just wants to win the fight. It's like trying to make a movie where the one stuntman just wants to win the fight every time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I suppose if you were really leaning into the idea of the necessity of a moral arc, you could be like demonstrating the, the char player character's flawed nature and then like have them fighting. Because really what's happening in the story is that the villain is an externalization of some internal flaw 
in in a way. And so really the character is fighting against themselves more than they're fighting against this this external thing. So, and you can't you can't defeat the thing until you've come to grips with it. So I mean it's possible you could have like I don't know do that somehow. I know Persona does that to a certain degree, but like you could lean into that, but it would be a very different kind of thing. Like you're saying, it's very different in games than in books or movies. And to answer the other part of the question, just what are some of my favorite he uh, villains? I mean, the, my my list is going to be very pedestrian. GLaDOS is, of course, fantastic. Handsome Jack. Most people like Handsome Jack. Uh, one I'll throw here that's somewhat controversial is Seymour from Final Fantasy X. Um, he also mm -hmm. appeared in Final Fantasy X. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he's not a great villain. I mean, he's just, I mean, he is a walking trope. The guy that wants to end all the pain in the world by destroying it. Oh, this world is flawed and I must, you know, destroy or I must cleanse it or whatever. Like that idiot who's like been yeah. in every anime ever. Yeah. And you're like, dude, it's just your hairdresser gave you a bad hair job. You don't have to kill everyone. <laughs> right. But there is just something about his performance and his look that is just so wonderfully irritating. That's <laughs> stupid, stupid. Stupid haircut makes me want to kill him as soon as he shows up in this story. I'm like, I can't wait to stab you again. Um, so I I enjoy, even though he's a terrible villain in that he doesn't have much interesting to say, and he's a big goof, and his plan is stupid. Um, I just love hating him. Um, th th those are three I came up with. Do you have any favorite villains? You know, when I was playing Wildermyth, I was really impressed by some of the stories and the way that they um, humanized some of the villains. In fact, in one of them, you actually do play as the villains for a, a section of it, where you're and like your job is you're not fighting the main characters, but you're exploring some place or whatever. And and it's like, oh, like it it really grabs you and it's like, oh, I understand where they're coming from, and like I'm still gonna fight them. We still have a, a disagreement, but like. I know who they are now. So, uh, Wildermyth, I think. There are a number of stories in there, and, and they're all quite good. Interesting. I know there's more. I know once I've um, published, once we publish this episode, I'll think of more. I suppose um, maybe Shodan makes the list. But Shodan, I think, is a great one off villain. Like, I don't want system shock sequels to keep bringing her back i don't think she makes a great recurring villain i think she's a great one-time villain and uh the you don't series... think the elusive man's gonna make the list <laughs> you know there's the oh i love to hate this character and you kind of get that with the elusive man oh i love to hate the guy that wrote this character <laughs> it's like a meta villain the writer <laughs> right <laughs> right he just hate the writer. I actually don't know. There, there are a couple guys. There's Casey and another guy. There's two guys, and I can never remember which is which because I deliberately like try not to pay too much attention to who is writing which games. Uh, Mac. There's Casey and Mac, Mac or Mark. Um, and I can't remember which direction it went or who had the most power or whatever. But, the, you know, the elusive man is the work of one of those two guys. So, technically, one of those two guys is my nemesis. <laughs> um, yeah. I can't think of any others that stand out. I thought the Typhon were cool in Prey, but I don't know if you would call them a villain. Like, it's, you know, like, it's almost like a disaster movie. Like, in a disaster movie... The hurricane is not the villain. Right. It's just the four. You know, it's 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 not a moral creature. It's not making decisions. It's just a thing that's happening. And that's how the Typhon feel. They just feel like a a thing that happens. And I don't suppose Walter Dahl also makes your list. No, he doesn't. Although I do like his voice actor, Stephen Blum. There we go. What actors are the best villains in video games? Oh. oh. Somebody ask that next week. Yeah, we'll tackle that. I, I want to think on that. 
All right. Dear DieCast, I've noticed that Seamus has a lot of interesting and incisive blog posts, particularly the retrospectives. I'm sure the thought has crossed your mind there must be a reason for not having done so yet, but I was curious as to why you don't turn those blog posts into videos. Okay, so this is a, um, this whole email is basically that question. All the best, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. So, yeah, I'm kind of torn on videos. I recognize I've got a lot of good things in the archives that would make fantastic videos. But that's sort of... I like making content for the blog audience, my main audience. And if I make, you know, if I take um, the plot-driven door, okay, that's a classic um, post on my site that I think is really strong. That would make a great video. But it would for people on the blog, it's they've seen it before. There's people that have read it three times. You know, <laughs> we've had the discussion. It's over. So it wouldn't be content for them. It would be content for strangers on YouTube. And I don't I don't get a lot of joy out of making content for strangers on YouTube. I I know I need to do it because that's how you bring more people to the blog. It's a necessary step. <laughs> But mm. I just would rather just make content for the people that read the blog. And I just sort of just find it very unrewarding to throw content into the sea of YouTube. So is this a, a carte blanche to anyone who wants to do readings of your old blog posts on YouTube if they just want to do it? <laughs> I mean, I guess. There um, you go, Andrew. I, I, I mean... If I were to do it, I'd want to turn it into a proper video essay. I would probably make it as an entry in this dumb industry, just because that's the branding I've got going. Hmm. But yeah, I'd rather make... So when I make a video, you know, videos take a long time. The only time it takes to make a video, you can make a few posts. Um, that's a little. That's yeah. not as bad now that I have Isaac helping me. Um, it was absolutely not worth it when I had to do everything. It, you know, in the time it would take to make a single video, I could make a few weeks worth of posts. And that just was not worth it. You know, it's like, here's a video that half you won't watch. And then, you know, next week, the, or, you know, next week, the blog's going to be blank. <laughs> I want to make content for you. That was a terrible proposition. Now with Isaac helping me, it's, I can make video content without interrupting the written content. But it's still... I'd rather just, you know, if I'm going to take the time to make a video, I want to make something both for YouTube and for the existing readership. I like that. So that everybody gets an article to read and the people on YouTube also get a video to watch. I don't hmm. know. I, it's It would be the smart thing to do, but it's not artistically rewarding to do. Put it that way. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean the, the real death, the real, the real joy killer here is that you can't have an intelligent discussion on youtube nobody comes in on youtube and leaves a long comment of like here's what i think the story was saying it's always like okay boomer lol you're too old it doesn't matter what you think because you're old or you're out of touch or you don't like the games i like or your priorities are really it's just like casual dismissals all the way down and it's no fun making content for those people. Mm, yeah. Dear DieCast, You may have heard about Casey Muratori's RefTerm, I hope I'm saying that right, a terminal emulator for Windows that vastly outperformed the standard Windows terminal. Are there other applications you think could be vastly improved by implementing lessons learned from game development? Fail, Tim. Thank you, Tim. There's a link to the RefTerm video in the show notes for those that are curious it's very interesting so here's what he does casey um has opens up i noticed that the terminal window is slow and i didn't question it like i should have basically the the terminal window kind of plateaued at some point right like in mm. the old days, it like took the computer a while to list a directory. It took time. And as your, you, it used to be you could watch it when, when you would type dir in the, in the command line and it would list all the stuff on your floppy disk. You, you could actually see it updating in real time, right? It was like uh -huh. th this speed little of, read head moving on the little 
<laughs> a magnetic media and get zzz, 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 and then the little lines would print out. Right, it moved a little faster than like a, the credits roll at the end of a movie. Okay, pretty slow. Almost slow enough that you could just read read it as it's being printed out to the screen. And then of course computers got faster and faster and we eventually hit the point where you'd type directory and it would all scroll by and you you know couldn't see it all. It was like, oh wow, it scrolled off the top of the screen. I needed to see some of that. I'll have to like I forget what the command was to break it into pages or whatever. But you know. Hmm. But then it stopped getting faster. And I never questioned no it. one was using it anymore and they didn't optimize right. it or whatever. Right. So Casey went went and made his own terminal and just printed out a gigabyte of text. And it took oh. five and and it took five and a half minutes. And he actually like he started it and you just saw this window, just a blur of text in the background. Uh just scrolling by super fast and then he he put that window in the background and you could see it behind him kind of still scrolling away but then he talked and talked for another five minutes and talked about this app that he made and at, you know at the end of five and a half minutes he, he pointed out, okay it was you know 330 seconds to print out this gigabyte of text now here's the version i made and it printed out in 30 30 seconds 30 seconds so it was an order of magnitude faster it was 10 times faster oh and his console was even more sophisticated it was doing all kinds of fancy font stuff <laughs> um that the windows terminal was not doing and then he further he did another optimization and got it down to two seconds so there's what? another or yeah another order of magnitude two or three seconds wow given the throughput there's he theorizes there should still be almost another order of magnitude left <laughs> yeah because you can get like eight gigabytes eight gigabits per second off of a modern ssd right right and and this is i believe so it was oh, it didn't count until it started until it had everything in memory so this was printing from memory not from the hard drive oh wow um, so yeah, he the he was talking about memory throughput, and yeah, it should it sh it should have another one further order of magnitude left that he he did not do. No, I watched that was the first half of the video, and that was a good. Jeez, how long was that? That was that was half an hour I watched, and I saw him get that far. That is fascinating to me. Now, on one hand, that's really impressive. On another hand, like, how often do people use the terminal in Windows? And how often do you do things that need it to be fast? Like you said, like, okay, you can print out a gigabyte of text really fast now, but when do you need to do that? That's not useful. Mm. Um, yeah. Like, what? Like, that's not a useful thing. I suppose if you had, like, some log file, like, some server app that was writing to a log and to the screen as it was running, and then when something would go wrong, it would generate um, huge volumes of text, right? And that would yeah. actually choke it. And so you would maybe wish that that wouldn't be a problem. I suppose in well, that... Well, I know when I'm running a Python program, a lot of times the print to screen is the slow point for for a program you know it's doing something and i want to print something out and like it runs a hundred times faster if i'm not printing anything out oh wow yeah yeah i've noticed that too i mean yeah printing printing to any kind of external output when you print when you're in unity and you print to it's standard out, which is actually, I mean, it's a little window with the scroll bar and everything. So that's mm. obviously going to be super slow, you know, and proportional font and, and like it's, it's a little text window. Yeah, exactly. So obviously that's going to be slow as hell. And, you know, it's running in C sharp anyway. <laughs> but, uh, and, and who knows how many layers uh, it has to go through to get there. You know, going from your program to like some sort of intermediate system and then get handed back up to the Windows system and then Windows has to handle that particular output. I mean, just, yeah, 
it's going through a lot of unoptimized layers before it starts printing out stuff. And it's very easy to slow your game to a crawl and you'll be like, what's wrong? And you realize, oh, I have it printing when I'm holding down the forward key. You know, I was, I was trying to see, <laughs> you know, I was doing some collision checking right. thing and I was printing out my position. First printing out some I'm, pairs of coordinates or something. Right, when I'm holding down W, and so, like, every time you hold down W, you drop to 10 frames a second, and you're like, oh, right, of course, it's slow. But, like, I I do, on the other hand, no, no, computer, there's no reason why that should slow you down in any way. Like, text is so, so simple to decode. It's so, so simple to display. You can have a character yeah. map, and, like, th there's no excuse for that. So, like, on the one hand, it's like, oh, yeah, well, of course, it's really slow printing out text. But on the other hand, it's like, wait, we had this problem solved in the 80s. Why is this a problem now? Right, and it's because that solution we had in the 80s hasn't been updated. <laughs> like, all this drawing, one of the things Casey's doing, I believe, is that his application is actually rendering the text um, as opposed to drawing it on the CPU. Like, it's actually... Like he's, I saw somewhere in his source he had uh, DirectX library, what I looked like DirectX libraries to me. Mm. And so that would, of course, speed things up. It's rendering to the GPU. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's very fascinating. Are, and the answer to this question is are there other things that we could learn from game developers to speed other systems up? And probably, yeah, everything. I mean, there's a bit of everything mm -hmm. can be... I mean, how often does Windows interface just lag for absolutely no reason in the world? And meanwhile, I'm playing this video game and I open up the menu and it's doing all these sliding text and, you know, fades in on this background and animated spinning icon thing. And it's like, that. that's fine. That's rendering at 60 frames a second. So why do I have a half second of lag when I open up the friggin' start menu windows? I actually don't right now. Yeah, it's instant, but you know, really weird. I, I actually, feel like text is a good place to start. Like if you if Windows just had like a really nice text editor, because because there's Notepad and that's got no formatting, and that's right. kind of nice sometimes. You want to just like have the plain raw text, and then there's WordPad, which works okay. Um, but like if you open up really, really big text files in Notepad, it hangs up. Oh, and if oh, you yes, open dies. up really, really big text files in WordPad, then sometimes like the the character rendering doesn't work w well. I, it's like baffling. Like one time I was working on this um, text generating thing and I generate a whole bunch of text and open it up in WordPad and all the characters are just in Chinese for some reason. I was like, I, how did that happen? <laughs> um, we had that at Active Worlds. Uh... Yeah, the world's program. You could turn on logging and just every part, of it, just anytime anybody had to analyze a system, they just have it right crap to the log file. And by default, the log file is disabled. But you turn it on and it was like a megabyte every couple seconds. <laughs> and this is back in the early aughts, right? Yeah, this is late 90s, early aughts. So you had to be really careful. Well, in fact, like <laughs> you run the program for a full minute and you can't open up that file. And for one thing, your friggin' hard drive is full because you just made a 60 gigabyte or 60 megabyte file. And, you know, your hard drive probably wasn't that big. You probably didn't even have a full terabyte. A couple of those will fill then. it right up. Right. Um, one of the features that I remember implementing was um, the almost like uh, when you're using a high speed camera and it has a circular buffer, you get rid of the it would just put a ceiling mm. on the size of the file and throw away the oldest stuff as it wrote. So yeah. it would never go above like five megabytes or something. Or I think it was even an option. Uh, because it, yeah, it would get out of control. And if you tried to open up a, a 30 megabyte file in Notepad and just, you, the, the problem is you, the, the stuff you wanted to see was always at the end, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, and the program crashes or whatever. And like, all you care right. about is like the two seconds before it crashed. Exactly. But that's at the end of this 30 megabyte file when you're on a, you know, late nineties machine. So you hit, you know, control page down i think to go to the end of the file mm -hmm. and then your computer just takes a nap 
<laughs> it's like, time to go get coffee. I'll be back when it's done thinking about that text. Yeah, like, Casey Muratori, like, where were you? And you're at the time, you're like, well, what do you expect? It was 30 entire megabyte. But then, like, all these years later, it's, like, still slow. Like, hang on. My computer is several orders of magnitude faster. Why is it not instant now? Why is notepad yeah, still no slow? Excuse. Are they deliberately... Yeah, are they deliberately slow like every time they they like get the latest updates from uh intel okay what's the what's the what's the increase this year in clock speeds oh we're getting a 10 percent. okay just go in and put a 10 percent slowdown on all of our code just have all the code <laughs> enter sleep for 10 percent of the time to offset that oh yeah it's fascinating. I, so I think these kinds of gains could be gotten anywhere. And that's kind of part of that is just, that's just part of software. I mean, sure, you can make things faster if you rewrite them from the ground up. You know, something written in the 90s when your big um, bottlenecks were, you know, in one place and now bottleneck, you know, your memory limits are no longer your big concern and you've got gigabytes of main memory and it's super fast and now your bottleneck's somewhere else and and that code has never been updated yeah if you rewrote it today it would be way faster um this is something i've been complaining about for years i i want microsoft to just go in and like to fix stuff like this like this is what i want them to improve i don't want you to center the start menu or whatever you did for windows 11. like oh look uh -huh. we made even bigger icons and here's a new screen that can help manage, like the start menu, that can give you the latest news and updates from MSNBC. No, get down in there with your, get, send your code monkeys down into the bowels of the kernel and touch things up. Look for bottlenecks. I just want Windows 10, but better. But like the same, you know. Those barnacles down there are gaining sentience. You really got to deal with that. <laughs> Yes, yes, exactly. All right, we're going long here. Um, this question's aimed at me, unless you've played uh, City Skylines. I have. I want to. You know, we'll just have. We'll just live dangerously. Dear Diecast, have you ever tried playing City Skylines wrong, throwing roads around willy nilly, applying the eh whatever philosophy of zoning? Taking the SimCity Monster Hates Your City video design as a how-to design guide and literally YOLOing everything until the result in monstrosity nears collapse and then trying to fix it? May the day find you well. Silvia Greenbraid. I, I think. Sil Sil Silva. Silva? Thanks, Greenbraid. Um, I've never played this way. I've played a lot of different ways. I tried building all rural, just nothing, but just like an entire state of farmland and tiny towns. I tried building only giant cities. I tried giving myself enough money that I could build mass transit from the very start to build the perfect walkable, no traffic city that didn't need roads. I tried building the entire city on one long winding road. Um, I've tried every different kind of power so i've tried to play it a, i don't know want to say wrong but a lot of weird impractical ways it's good mm. I, uh, I i didn't play city skylines like this but i have played sim city 2000 like this where you you know get a city and build it all up and then like destroy it all with fires and don't put any of them out and have you know the aliens come and blow stuff up and it's actually surprisingly resilient because most of the cost of building the city is actually the cost per unit of zoning. And once the zoning cost is paid, it, it never goes away. So you just kind of like let them rebuild the stuff. You rebuild the roads and you're basically done. Another thing I tend to do is I actually try to avoid bulldozing stuff. I would love a mod that you had to pay for anything you bulldozed because it always just, I just feel like this horrible tyrant. Oh, I need a road here. Um, yeah, I'll just get rid of these houses. And it's like, people live there. <laughs> Have you ever seen them actually try to get a bunch of houses out of the way of some really important infrastructure? That takes years. That takes years and millions of dollars, and sometimes it doesn't even work. Yeah. Um, 
And, uh, you know, as it ought to, like, get more and more expensive the more and more territory you, you know, ramp up exponentially. Like, taking one house, not a big deal. You want to take a whole neighborhood, that's just going to take ridiculous... You're going to pay for those houses ten times over in legal fees, and the, even then, it'll take you years. <clears throat> yeah. And I like that as a way of just making you... That that would be an it's, here's the thing that would give you an incentive to all right here's these houses that are in my way what I'm gonna do rather than buy them right now they're very valuable houses I'm just going to put a big old nasty train screaming by and watch <laughs> their property values plummet those houses will go empty as people move out. And then you can take the houses. You know, you just scoop them up for nothing and bulldoze them. <laughs> a little gameplay in there. Yeah, I would love it if that's how you had to handle um, existing houses rather than just bulldozing it. Houses and businesses. Yeah, yeah. You can't disconnect them from the power network because that would be illegal. But you can make them brown out more frequently. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You could brown. I could, I could put them on their own windmill their own shitty windmill that's just not quite enough for the group. <laughs> <laughs> there are just so many creative ways you could be an asshole and, and, and get people to leave rather than just bulldozing their house. And I just think that would be a fun thing to tackle. And it would be fun just because of the challenge of it. Like, Instead of just, oh, I've got, you know, five how I've got five apartment buildings and a skyscraper in my way. No problem. I'll just left click on them with the bulldozer and that entire skyscraper just vanishes. <laughs> a billion dollars and the guy who built it evidently doesn't mind that I I just wipe it out of existence without giving him anything for it. Right. And puff of smoke and butterflies and it's gone. There's no problems. So so yes, I've played. I don't know that I've played the game wrong. I guess we've all played the game wrong. <laughs> if you're bulldozing houses you haven't paid for, you've done something very wrong. Well, we can join Rockstar then. <laughs> right. All right. Thank you to everybody who sent in questions. These were fun. If you've got a question for the show, our email is diecast at shamesyoung.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. Say goodbye, Paul. Goodbye.